Hello, welcome to the Daily Telegraph NRL podcast. Adam Mobbs here, joined by Phil Rothfield, Michael Carianis. Feels like a big morning already because we've got this Ronnie Palmer rule. Ronnie Palmer was always the 40-20. You know, it looked like a four-year-old, legs of a 20-year-old. This is the 80-20 podcast, 80% jibber. 20% league, but I think we exceeded that pre-show. We had a, <laughs> yes. We had Brent Reid come in and bomb us with... Deliver my coffee. Coffee. Uh, he exited to Buzz, you saying, Brent, you are unfit <laughs> to cover rugby league. Yeah. <laughs> well, let's talk about... No, we can't, because he bagged a player who I think is a very good NRL player. I, I really do. I've mm. got a high opinion of this guy. And Reedy basically said he can't play. <laughs> uh, yeah, I said, you're unfit to be covering this sport. <laughs> As he walked out the doors. Quite amusing. <laughs> I'll wait until I got my coffee. <laughs> yeah. Before I abused him. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah that was funny. Oh, dear. Poor mate. old Reedy. You know, I can only give him so much help. How much help does he need, do you reckon? Plenty. Who needs who needs more help? Maybe. Well, as you know, I'm going on extended leave soon, so mm. uh, you guys have got him here <laughs> up until Christmas. Good luck. I cannot control that bloke. Oh well, I think the dinner menu segment at the end oh. of the show just needs oh. to be stretched out a no, little bit. It needs to be condensed because he goes on too long. How do you stop him though? There's no break. Just cut him off. You know when you talk to someone, you wait for that pause to say. Anyway, there's no just break. Just cut him. Bang. Right, dear me. Uh, what's going on today, guys? Um, I know finals time's on, but mm. Ben Hunt seems to be making news again with I tell you what, yeah. if I was if I was dating someone with the <laughs> attitude of Ben Hunt, mm. I would not be happy with our long term prospects. Is this marriage counselling <laughs> again? Oh <laughs> yeah, there you go, eh? <laughs> I I think I, I'm really getting angry about Ben Hunt and the fact that he does not sound committed enough for my liking. Did he say yesterday that the Dragons won his first preference? Or? Yeah, he said uh, Dragons was not my first choice. Yeah. It, oh. retirement, definitely pops into Pops your head. In. How uh, long has he been St George? Five, six, six years? years. Mm. So he's earned six, more than $6 million out of that club. He's the captain of the club, that beautiful red V. And for him to be talking like the manner in which he is, I think it's dead set appalling. I think the fans, the mem- they're about to put memberships on sale and you've got a captain who doesn't want to be there. Mm. Yeah. I think it's time, Mick. They really made a call on him. And I know, m- mate, it's not as if he's been playing the joint down. Yeah. It is I'm like, really you, angry uh, about you it. You mentioned memberships. How do you sell a membership package with Ben Hunt on the front of it? I know. It is hard. It is difficult. And, uh, surely at some stage... Well, you're stage, a fan. You're, how do you, you, surely at, at, at some stage, Ben... And I, you know, I had that conversation with him last week as well when we were in that, oh. that Q&A. And, and surely at, at some stage, Ben has to say, look, guys, I've committed to the Dragons for 2024. That's it. Have you, have you ever asked anyone before, have they been held hostage? No. <laughs> no. No, no. <laughs> Great and question, Buzz. It was obviously oh, yeah. tongue in cheek, right? Yeah, I know. Well, like, <laughs> you know. Um, but no, I asked him last week because it, it sounds like he's there against his will. And they really, really fast forward to this. Yeah. I'll tell you what's making me angry. He's been picked for the Prime Minister's game in PNG, right? A really important game on the calendar. Not necessarily his fault. The media are asking him rightly about St George. There was an opportunity there for Ben Hunt to talk up that there's a couple of St George teammates, St George Illawarra teammates in the Prime Minister. I'm talking Tyrell Sloan and Zach Lomax. Mm. And how he, <coughs> excuse me, how excited he is to have teammates from an underperforming club getting that experience at an elite level with Meninga and all the other stars from other clubs. He could have switched tack on any of those interviews and just said, I've said enough on the Dragons, on yeah. my future. I'm so excited for Zach and the young fullback. Mm. And yeah. for a guy, look, we're not talking about a youngster. We're talking about a, boy who's been, a man who's been around there forever. It's not good enough, Michael. No, I, I agree. That's what I, I, I sort of said before, Buzz. I think at some point, Ben's got to just come out and say, look, I've said what I've said. Enough is enough. I'll be there and that's it. Mm. Um, because... Mate, he's been sulking since Hook left, eight, ten weeks ago. Yeah, I don't know if sulking's... He the, has, mate. I don't mate. know, Buzz, because he, it, it's not his nature. It's not his personality. Like, if he's there, or well, he'll be there, you know, 
he'll still be the best trainer. He'll still be fully committed. He'll still do all this sort of stuff. Doesn't right? sound it. No, I, I don't think anyone can doubt his effort um, and um, his on-field commitment to the the club. And he and he's made it clear that his issue is not with Shane Flanagan, right? So. Um, well, it, who's it, is, it with? It his, is. his issue must be with his teammates. He doesn't think his teammates are good enough because he wants to go to at home and to go to a stronger club. Is that right? Well, he definitely doesn't think the roster's good enough. Well, there he's bagging his teammates. I can't argue Give with that, Give them some do encouragement. You, do, you, do you think the roster's good enough, Buzz? Um, I think they'll toughen the side up, but I don't think there'll be any rubbish at St George next year, and I can see them slightly improving. And they've got to aim for the following year, 25, and get a de- couple of decent players in. Definitely, yeah. And you know what? To... I'd be offering Hunt anywhere, the Moody's in, to rival club for a good swap. Oh, I, I, if I was the Dragons, I'd be looking at that too. I'd be looking at... I wouldn't just release him, right? No, no. chance. Right? But I'd be trying to cut your losses a little bit, trying to find... Um, you know Brisbane's best young talent, Gold Coast's best young talent, and and, and get him to the Dragons. Need a halfback, or, or you know when uh, Reynolds retires. Well, ben Hunt's older. But obviously the Titans. Yeah. You know, but is Jaden Campbell a sufficient swap or a player like him? Yeah. I'm not sure he is. It's a starting point. Mm. It'd be have to be Jaden Campbell yeah, and someone. Yeah, but where do you play? There's a lot someone. of you know. Jaden Campbell's a seven point five player. Yeah. You yeah, know, with an ups with a potential. So Georgia to, got a few of them, but they've yeah. let they've let go Jaden Sullivan as well in amongst yeah, yeah. all this. So the yeah, the makeup of this team now, if if he keeps going the way he's talking here, with you know um, at this stage I'm a dragon and going into preseason, that's all I will think about. I've got kind of not thought about it, but any team in Queensland is definitely an option. Whether the Titans can fit you in is another thing. That just as, as a leader a, at the club, I I'm don't know. I'm going to name this guy. I had a text message from a 40-year or more St. George Illawarra fan last night, Jeffrey Greenwood. And his message to St. George was very simple, piss him off. And this is a long-time man who's put his hand into his pocket for membership and taken yeah, his kids. And, that's a and when you start losing fat. Mobs, it's big. That's mm. a similar sentiment that's held by a, a lot of people, Buzz. There's no doubt. And I asked, ben, I asked Ben about that too. And he goes, I get it. I can understand why fans aren't happy with what I'm saying and, and, and the stance I'm, I'm sort of taking. So, um, look. I, I, you, what, what's a million dollars divided by 52, guys? Can you that? stop all asking all me all mathematics all questions? questions. <laughs> well, it, well, what I'm saying is and we've got to get to some gibber in a minute. Yeah, because this is far too serious. It's twenty mm-hmm. grand a week, so he's happy to put twenty k a week into his CBA or Westpac or NAB or wherever he banks. St George Bank, maybe St George. <laughs> yeah. but even they're going. They're like Ben Hunt. They so want out they, too. Uh, oh. But you know what I mean, Mick. Mm. He's getting twenty thousand dollars. Yeah. I oh, know. I get all that. I get all. And it's this is Imagine the captain. If you this is the captain of the him, club. Or Ben English or Jim Silver. Oh, I'm not sure I want to be here. They'd make sure I stay. Oh, would they? I'd, I would be hardly be getting into a bidding war. <laughs> 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 How about that? I like Mick. I've got a soft spot for Mick. Oh, there you go. I See, know imagine. you do. <laughs> <laughs> You're the only he one. He seems to get more favours than I do around oh. this joint. He does. Trust me. <laughs> oh, dear. Uh, so know. you would, if the Herald came to him, you'd go hard to... I tell him he's got a job here and he's got to suck it up and get on with it. I don't care if he's like... got a checkbook to be able to handle that sort of thing? If he doesn't like working with Brent Reid, he's just got to get <laughs> over it and get on and work. That's the problem. Where do you keep your checkbook and do you have a salary cap? Salary cap? Yeah, it's very tight. It's, it's top heavy, I'd suggest. <laughs> oh. Mate, he questions me for a taxi from here to <laughs> the city. <laughs> Uh, I did follow that up this week. I think, yeah, yeah it wasn't your. It stumped Stephanie. Even. It, it wasn't. It wasn't <laughs> no. user error. No. It wasn't your fault. I'm sure people want to hear us yeah, talk about, about your expenses. expenses. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, what can we gibber about, boys? What well, is worth gibbering? Well, about? I want to know. Can you guys talk about the behind closed doors lunch that you had? Go, Buzz. Okay. Um, Set the scene. This time of the year, um, I plan. Half a dozen lunches with Sydney clubs to get together to re-establish relationships that might have become strained for a number of reasons uh, during the year. And yesterday, um, 
we, uh, Brent Reed, Michael Karianis, David Rickell, myself, went to lunch with Lee Hadjapentalis and um, the great Fiasco Pasco. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we went to Totty's in Roselle. It was uh-huh. a lovely meal. And um, Lee announced to us that he'd signed again for, or he'd been appointed for no- another three years. And I did say to him, this is very unusual considering your review hasn't even begun and, you know, you're in charge. <laughs> um, what was the response to that? Oh, well, he just sort of shook his shoulders, you know. But y- they're good people. I, I like their company and they're doing their best. And there's one thing I'll say to them. Their football operation off the field is in pretty good shape, right? They've got Campbelltown, they've got the Centre of Excellence Concord, they've got Leichhardt. They just need to win footy games, Mobsy, which is what it's all that's about. All, that's all people care. They've got, uh, so you said, they've got two home grounds and a Centre of Excellence and... That's a thumbs up from you. And and a good balance sheet. And a good lunch. Um, yeah, yeah. I, I was going to ask who paid, but we'll, we'll get to that later. And um, so last time we had this, it was a bit of a reunion, but there was one person <laughs> missing, Buzz. Who was missing? Benji. No, no well, from the reunion. It was a little get-together a couple of years ago. Oh, Tim Sheens. <laughs> yes, yes. Well, well, we appointed Tim Sheens. <laughs> Didn't come. I walked in yesterday and I said, "Who do I need to appoint this time? Your football general manager, <laughs> yeah, footy, not yeah. Mark O'Neill. No, thank you." Is that what he said? Yeah, I don't think he's suitable for that job, and I don't mind saying that. Who do you think's going to get that one? Well, they're in. They reached out to Michael Checker about a month ago and um, had a conversation with Michael. Not so much about the role, but just seeing where his head's at and and what. Um, you know what, what his future may look like. He's obviously in the middle of a, a World Cup with Argentina, so I expect that conversation to to continue. Um, once that his World Cup commitments are, are over there, he's obviously really close with Robbie Farah. Robbie Farah instigated uh, the club to to pursue Michael Checker. Um, he's a cousin of Adam Dewey, so he, he's got that connection there. I think he'd be a really interesting appointment. Mm. Really, if he was left to come field, on. left field. Might be yeah, what much the club to do with needs. Him. Buzz had a little bit to do with him. Yeah, spoke to him several months ago when the St George coaching job was available, and he'd been approached by a third party to ask him to apply for that job. He wanted to wait and hear from the club, and he never did hear from them. Um, he's achieved so much in rugby union. I think he would like to be involved in rugby league. He definitely would, yeah. Is a head of football role right for him with the connections you need and everything along those lines? It, it's, it, it will be interesting to see because um, he's a guy that's got presence. He walks into a room and you know he's there mm. and, and he's super articulate. He, he knows... Like I he, heard you say that last night on 360. Yeah, he's so like, can you give us some... some <laughs> hey. You're on tonight, so I'm going to be watching... To, hey, can you to give see. us fresh content, not rehash, please? Oh, I'm sorry. There's so many media... Think of some new lines, now. mate. Prepare. But, um, the <laughs> bread what do you, and butter. You tell him, as, as the general did you man say on what? SEN this morning that he had presents when he walks into a room? I bet you did. <laughs> I, I bet I'm you did. I'm going to get the audio and think, check. No, I don't think we spoke about Michael Checker on SEN this morning. Can't That's bad producing. We spoke about Dream Buller, yeah. uh, which we haven't got to yet. We spoke mm. about Lee. Um, but no, I, I think it's... It's out of the box, and maybe that's what the West Tigers need. But you're right, Mobsy. Like his instinct is to coach, mm. right? Whether this will give him enough of a fix um, or not, I'm, I'm not sure. Will he try and do a little bit of coaching or a men- mentorship to Benji? You know, I, I'm not sure. But I, you know, I've spoken to him before, Buzz, and he, I think mm. if someone offered him a head coaching job in the NRL, mm. he'd take it. Well, I don't like think was... anyone would gamble though, Mobsy, no. on him as a head coach. No, well... But in a role like this where he puts his mitts all over the footy department, I think it's got a lot of, you know, positive. It's not quite the Ted Lasso appointment, but it would be interesting. No. yeah. Have you watched Ted Lasso? No. You, you've done yeah. the series yet? Yeah, oh great show. Gosh, I love it. Very funny. Great Nick, show. You've got to do it. Ted yeah. Lasso. Apple TV. Mm. But given the way that he coached Argentina... And Lebanon yeah, so last cool. year. Rugby league team. Yeah. No, How cool is that? at the same time last yeah. year during the rugby league for world nothing, cup, for yeah, the, the, the Lebanon team. Like. All I'll say is, 
The West Tigers, law of averages, says they're overdue to have a good appointment. Long overdue. At Sheens, they had Madge and Jason Taylor and Cleary jumped off the um, bus. And I would have a whack at this one. I really, really would. Didn't they have, obviously, Andrew Webster there for a little while, but that was... Was he not ready for a first grade gig there? Webster was there. Ben Gardner was there. He's now the mm. coach of Samoa. So, um, yeah, they obviously didn't. You've got to get the structures right. You've got to get everything sorted. But I guess uh, in a real shot in the arm for them, as you alluded to before, Jareem Buller yeah. locking in until the end of 2027. That's a vote of confidence in my books for a young player who's uh, exploded onto the scene. Uh, what was Train and trial deal oh, yeah, yep. 12 months yeah. ago. Into a dev deal, into a, <laughs> you know, winning the Player of the Year award. Yeah. Crazy story. What Remarkable a Remarkable story. Yep. Um, one of the shining lights for, for the West Tigers and, um, you know, good for him to, to cash in while, while he's hot and, and good for the West Tigers to lock down one of the um, game's best young talents. So I think it's a win-win for him. I think it's a good deal. I think um, when you talk about the upside of, of the West Tigers, well, he's at the top of your list. He is, he is, and Big Stefano, the front row forward. Yeah. Um, and I'm so excited for Buller. If they start winning footy games, they start getting a bit more momentum, and he could be even just exceptional player. To, question to do what he's done in a struggling wooden yeah. spoon outfit is remarkable. The question still is around their halves, right? You mm -hmm. know, they've signed a couple, but they've signed a lot. But yeah. are any of them going to be ready for first grade or are going to be, obviously, Aiden Caesar's, you know, established but what's his body like how many games is he going to play what sort of impact will he have Jaden Sullivan's coming back from the hamstring young Finu, the jury's out right so for me that's where the biggest questions on the West Tigers to, to get them off that bottom of the ladder um, it's going to come down to uh, how they recruited in the halves mm. checking your phone there anything important nah it's on silent at least yeah that, that's one positive I guess we should talk some finals because we've got some big games coming up this weekend Panthers Storm, well, news this morning that Jerome Luai and Isaac Tungo cleared to play. So massive inclusions for them. Can the Storm find another gear, Buzzy, to challenge them? I think they can. Look, I, I think Penrith are nearly good things, but Storm improved a little bit last week and they'll need to improve a lot more this week, won't they? Um, mm. Having Jerome Hughes back, he's sweet, I presume. Yeah, yeah, he's expected to play. You take pressure off Munster. Um, yeah, um, they'll start Big Nelson, I presume. Um, Harry Grant, does that work, Mick, bringing him off the bench? Oh, I think I'd have Harry Grant out there for 80. Yeah. Um, look, Penrith I expect to win, but I think it'll be a great semi-final. I really do. I, I think Penrith are, are clear favourites in, in this one. I think um, they're... Their middle forwards, I think, will just take it to to, Pen, uh, to Melbourne and allow the likes of Cleary and Luai and Dylan Ed Edwards to, to play off the back of that. Stephen Crichton's in career best form. He's been outstanding um, at, at centre, so I just can't... Look, the Storm have some wonderful players. Munster, Hughes, if they can turn it on, Harry Grant can turn it on, they can change the game very quickly. But It's not a bad uh, spine, is it? Nick Maney out the back. Mm. How safe is that guy under pressure? He was outstanding last week. Great last week. Yeah, he yeah, was my man of the match for them last week. He was really, really good. But um, that's so what that's a great spine, Mick. It is, but I, I just think their forward pack is not. It, it doesn't come anywhere near the the Penrith Panthers one. Mm. I think they got the. I think the Melbourne Storm out of the top four sides remaining have the worst forward pack. Do you? I don't mind big Chewy up front. How, where would you rank him over the four? Where that. would you rank that? that Christian four? Welsh, I don't think, has been the origin player this year. Out of the top four, Buzz, where would you rank their forward pack? If you got Penrith... I actually think the best middles in the competition are Flegler, Haas, Carrigan. The best middle combination. So you've got them ahead of Melbourne? You, you're probably right, mate. They're, they're probably third or fourth with the Warriors. I've got the, the Warriors. Middle. I've got the Warriors ahead of their forward, in the forward pack. Yeah. You're tricking him into agreeing with you here. You're dividing and conquering. I see what you're doing. Very clever. Are you with me, Buzzy? Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you got yeah. him. Hey. Are you with me, Mobsy? Oh, yeah, I think so. I think, oh, and that's not to diminish their no, forward pack. because still a very good yeah, side. Still a very, yeah. If I'm ranking them from one to four, 
Mm. Melbourne are four. Well, it's probably why they went so hard for Tino, didn't they? Would have been a game changer for mm. him. Yeah, yeah. It really would have. Mm. Um, any Tino's dis- my favourite front rower. Who's your, let's name our favourite front row in the comp. There's so many great. There's Fanua Blake, there's Haas, there's... Fisher Harris. Fisher Harris. Mm. I'm going Tino. I love what Fanua Blake's been doing this year. I love that full work. Mm. But I'm going Haas. Um, You're going Haas. I'm going Haas. He's not as rampaging to me. Big engine. 65 minutes of grunt though, but yeah. He doesn't have a fear. Like, I know what you're saying. He's not as um, explosive as... But for 65 minutes coming at you, Mm. there's not a better middle in the game for mine. To sustain it for that period of time. Tino is just a bit more aggression. I I like to... I'm not... Look, these are all a, a, a toss of the coin. Mm. I, 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 Regan Campbell Gillard. Oh, yeah. Junior Barlow. <laughs> um, no, a lot of us said about Twinkle Toes for Noel Blake. Close oh, to the line, just when you think footwork. you're lining up to tackle him and that little bit Dang. of movement. Yeah. Like, I'm not going to, like, I, I'll say Haas, but I'm not going to mm. like, have a crack at anyone else for saying the other blokes. The game's healthy, isn't it, when we're talking about so many great front row forwards? Yeah. Yep. And we were talking recently, we were just around the office about the era, the generation of fullbacks we got now. And even all the old halves, you know, the Cherry Evans, the Reynolds, um, who else? Mobsy is old. Um, Sean Johnson. Sean Johnson. Mm. Just at the top of their game, these. Yeah. Isn't it interesting? I was talking with these uh, about this, Paul, but look, look at this Fisher Harris, Leota, your man, Lindsay Smith, breaking news, <laughs> signing news last week. Um, Lindsay Smith's come into first grade and they've been so patient with him and now just... Is that, that my exclusive signing story? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, Spencer Lenu's out the door at the end of the season, yeah. Rooster's bound, and Lindsay Smith just... He'll just slot into that role and yeah. they'll find someone to replace Lindsay Smith in his role. Well, that's how good the front rowers are. Spencer mm. Lenu can't get a start. Yeah, yeah. Imagine the Roosters with him and Collins next year. Imagine him and Jared in the same team. And bit Jared, of, bit yeah. of madness. And Bradley, oh, and Bradley, and Bradley, Bradley bit of madness. If they don't win the comp next year, the Roosters, I'll get out of journalism. Seriously, <laughs> oh mate, they've got to win next year. That's a big call, mate. Have you seen their three wingers? Tupu, <laughs> Dom Young, Swalihi, yeah. Dom Young. Have you seen their centres? Billy Smith, Joey Marley. Have you seen their fullback, James Tedesco? Kerry's going gangbusters. I know. Sam Walker. I Mate, know. they have to be favourites to win the comp next year. I know you're like at the back end of your career. Yes. Like, <laughs> being respectful here. But yeah, to lay you? your career on the line for the Roosters winning the comp could be <laughs> no, the silliest well. thing you've ever said. <laughs> I retract this. <laughs> <laughs> I'll buy you lunch. <laughs> <laughs> if they don't win the comp. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, but, do you agree though? Oh, oh what did oh. we just say? Oh, look at that. That's um. Can that's I a, take this call? Well, okay. if just, you want to. Righto. Well, no oh, he's actually taking it. Away he goes. So. Right, see you, boss. Thanks, mate. <laughs> <laughs> so just to fill everyone in, he's now speaking to the Australian Test coach okay. Mal Meninga. He's stopped his podcast. Obviously, you see where you and I are ranked um, in importance. So brush us for an immortal. Yeah. Yeah, the great Mal. He's when an immortal fella, calls, Mal. you answer. He's yes. a good fella. Great man. Uh, great man, Malcolm Meninga. Um, Question mark. Question mark. No, actually, well, question. We, what are we gibbering about? I don't know. Are you so retiring? Yeah, you're yeah. retiring. What's going on? Yeah. Do you agree Roosters. Roosters should be favourites no. next year? No. Penrith. Where would you have them? Well, I've just read you the side out, Mobs. I'm just looking at this Penrith I, side I that's odds on. I this year. I don't know if I, I'm going to get burnt twice. I'll probably have them win the comp the last threes, I reckon. Well, you'll have them in the top four? You know See, look, I'm trying to coach you blokes. You know who I'm going to have There are more top four? fans out there than Penrith, Storm... You know who, who I'm plays have the other game? Four? Warriors and Broncos. Buzz? So we need to bring fans in from I other am clubs on this podcast. I'm going to declare Adam. <laughs> I'm going to declare another side that didn't make the top eight in the top four. Who? <laughs> and it's not South. Who? Newcastle. No, they made the top eight. You gibber. <laughs> who? Manly. Are you? Yeah. Top four next year. Yeah. What, what is it my, with you I, and Manly? You sleep with Seeps or I Messi? Or? <laughs> I just like their roster. With the Luke Brooks inclusion provided, like, like you mate, you got to put an asterisk. You talk about clubs light on middle forwards. That's one club light on middle forwards. You're in for twile. Uh, oh, that'll make a difference. He'll score some tries. <laughs> oh, please. Oh, okay, because the middle forwards' job is to score tries. <laughs> hey, guess oh, what? We yeah. gone two potties without talking para. They did just sign Kelma Tuolangi from Manly. Good signing. Good signing. Yeah. Good yeah. signing. Yeah. Uh, 
there, there's one got there. a habit of turning those guys into good first graders. So um, you can have Josh Schuster too, I reckon. <laughs> how much for? Hmm. I don't know. Mm, depends how much they're chipping in. Hey, uh, uh, back to this. my prediction. Manly, um, Manly will make the eight. Manly will definitely make the eight. Jeez. The interesting well, story at Manly next year is Tolu. Because I think he can play like Reese Walsh out the back. Mm. And I think that for longevity of his career, Tom Turbo, but while he is a champion fullback, should consider a move to, to take some mileage out of his leg. But when I say move there, Mick, I say ro- Rove. Yeah, they should both do. They, they, they got to find or a way. Or even swap positions. Yeah, those. and, and to, to give Tommy a spell at some stage during a game, maybe potentially. But, yeah, they've got to get both those guys on the ball. Yeah. No doubt. See, this is experience. With How many clubs have I dragged into this? How many lots of I, fans? I think I mentioned I, Manly, just saying. <laughs> I've dragged tens of thousands of fans into this Tens body. of thousands. <laughs> See, and when you promote it, on socials, mm. just say Buzz, you know. Buzz will something. retire if the Roosters yeah. don't win comp. Yeah. Yeah. Everyone, will be, not. everyone will be cheering the Roosters next well, year. you know what? I'm <laughs> going to go and see producer Gav and ask him to cut it. <laughs> That's what I should have done a couple of months ago. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, are you, Gronk. Uh, Question yeah. for you. Back to the finals. Well, I've, no. I just want to know, do you buy into the Penrith are disadvantaged by playing at a neutral venue and the Broncos are <laughs> playing at home? What a joke. Well, I like this. It's a joke. Really? How is that? Like, I'm not. I'm not having a crack at the story. I'm not having a crack that it's an issue, right? Like, Brisbane. Everyone knows the rules. Like, Brisbane deserve a right to play at Suncorp Stadium this week, and Penrith can't play at Panther Stadium. Like, it's quite clear. So they get an advantage. Brisbane. I brought yeah. up something at lunch yesterday. Warriors get an advantage <laughs> if it happens there. Melbourne <laughs> would get an advantage if it happens there. The Roosters. It, all the teams that use um, Sydney Olympic Park as their home ground get an advantage there. It did make me laugh when oh, we're, it's a neutral venue and yeah, it's not like you're trekking to Antarctica. You're half an hour down the M4 to go to Olympic Park, which you you've been there a lot the last few years. I what I do Canterbury and South play each other at Acor. I I could understand in a semi final. I could have both home, so you've got to move both. If I'm Penrith and I was playing the Roosters, I wouldn't want to play them at the SFS. No, I get that. Right, because there's there's options available, and obviously, particularly Penrith are the top seed. If the Roosters mm. are the top seed, then bad luck. Yeah. But I get that, right? Because that's a, a clear, that's a distinct disadvantage for the top seed, mm. right? But suck it up. Yeah. Brisbane deserve a mm. home final. Where, where, where are they going to play them? The Gold Coast? Question, the Gabba? That was, like, gonna, honestly. Where are you going to go? Take it to Townsville. Please. We're, we're doing this for the fans. We're already no. dudded them by playing it. Renovation Park down at <laughs> Renovation Cronulla. Park. Well, I'm not supporting <laughs> Renovation Park. Yeah. So, what uh, do you think Brisbane should be playing at Suncorp, Buzz? Yes, I do. Yeah. But I would like to see a revamp and a a, a policy to be introduced next year uh, on a situation where we can get most people into. Let's use the C word criteria. Criteria, yeah. For. Stadiums for week one. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That has to be. You can't have yeah. it at Shark Park. You couldn't have it at Leichhardt. No. And maybe, you can't have it Cogra. at Brookvale either. You can't. <laughs> maybe minimum 22,000, something like that. Corporate Enough corporate facilities where the game can cash in on this time of the year when they should be making... But the policy's got to be set in the pre-season so we're not getting to the week of yeah. the finals and having the debate or the when, when it's really emotive. So I'd um, like to see the last two weeks of the finals played in Sydney. I'd like to see New South Wales government give Peter Volandis a heap of money, not to keep the grand final here, but to keep the qualifiers here. How many you, people would so we get you, Brisbane no, Warriors? No, plus. what I'm saying, and you will not listen. I'm listening. I want Sydney to, and the New South Wales government to be involved in having this spectacular month of sport. So you've got the two grand final qualifiers, right? You'd play them as a double header every Saturday night, uh, on the Saturday night at uh, Homebush. Saturday afternoon, Saturday night. What are you laughing? Oh, I just can't believe you're you're pitching Why? this up. You want to take the atmosphere that was two weeks ago at Brisbane away from them this weekend? You you and watch play Brisbane Warriors in Sydney. I want, um, sorry, and play Brisbane Warriors it's in part Sydney. Part of a double header, yeah. No. Nah. Why? I don't want to see. What's wrong with it? Because it should be in this Queensland. This is the home of rugby league. What if it's in? We used to rock up to the cricket ground every Saturday afternoon 
for all the finals. Well, I remember going to the and SFS for the finals. If you put it into bus. a spectacular month of sport with the Everest, right? Two weeks after, something in between. It's Sydney's going to rock. But what are you saying to those 50,000 Broncos fans up there? You're just saying up yours Get too bad? Get a plane down here, Adam. <laughs> oh. Jump on a plane. Send your invoice to Buzz, ladies and gentlemen. It's yeah. like we go up there for Magic Round. Yes, yeah, so? We go up there for Origin. You guys have got to get modern. <laughs> modern? You do. You do. <laughs> well, bring in a, a Sydney-centric game back to Sydney. Let's stay modern. <laughs> Good point. <laughs> As you usually say to me, this is one. To a break. This is one of your best potties. I need some this tips out of you. <laughs> Why? We're still rolling. Oh, are we? Are, are you not happy with it? I'm struggling. Today. You are struggling. It's okay. We'll carry you again. Oh, you brought in a lot of different clubs. I do need some tips from you though. Panther Storm, winner and margin. Oh, what did I say in the email I just sent to you? Um, Panthers by ten. Mick. Just give us a tip. But I, just, I'm trying to work. He's going back to his... his Penrith by four. Penrith four. That's Got close. Got a first try scorer. Stephen Crichton. Mm. Will Warbrick. Will Warbrick. Ooh, against run of play. And I've got Broncos by 10. Broncos 10. Yeah. Jeez. I, I loved that Warriors atmosphere last week over there. It was so yeah, good for cool. them. The, the 750 kickoff stinks. It... Stinks, yeah. That's I, way to tell, way to get on Buzz's modern bandwagon and tell a fan base they're not wanted by playing the game at seven fifty. It's like playing semi-finals here in Sydney. That's another thing that needs to be looked at when the NRL is doing their broadcast deals or whatever. The fact that if the Warriors are in a final, there needs to be a concession for their time. They did it last week, and it needs to be a, a staple of uh, you want the my Warriors Broncos featuring. Tip? Nope, you don't want it. <laughs> Mobsy does though. <laughs> Broncos by eight. First try scorer, Herbie Farnworth. Yeah, righto. Off to the Dolphins. Next. How good are the Dolphins going to be next we year? Have Let's bring another that. club We've got in. a question on that. Flegler and... Should we do get we do questions? meals or mm. questions first? Well, let's get the questions. Let's get the questions because... I'll tell you what, we, get, we are getting a lot. Now, I think, well, you're, I think we've got to do a shout out to these listeners because... You got to pass this podcast around. Tell your friends about it. Tell them to send in some questions. We want to hear from you. It's what do you think, Mick? These are getting better and better. Ever since I gave out your email address, there's a few. The last couple of from emails. Think about giving you a so. home address out just to. <laughs> you can. No keep. worries. People can <laughs> come over. Dog's very aggressive. Um, <clears throat> Simon goes. Kevin Walters took three years to get the Broncos into the top four and had players calling him a bad coach. Uh, Andrew Webster did it in one coach of the year, no contest. How many Daly M awards will the Warriors get? So the suggestion here from Simon is overall, which is Sean Johnson, prop Adam Fanua Blake, winger uh, Dallin Watney Zalesniak, and coach. Do you say Watney? That's oh. what we say on ABC, um, yeah. I go I with Tenny. Yeah. With Tenny Zalesniak. We say Watney Zalesniak. Mm. Can you please pronounce the West Tigers hooker for me? In Abby your... Koroyasau. Abby Koroyasau. Koroyasau. Oh, right, okay. That's how we say it. That's how you say it, yeah. I no, think uh, Only Simon's with your highfalutin ABC, mates. You don't say it here well, on the pod. I, it's, yeah, it's a tricky one because I say, like, so if I'm on a, a show and someone's saying it like that, I just go with it because I don't want to how, how correct does, them. How does Appy want it pronounced? Well, I'm oh. assuming it's called Royce Al. Mm. Otherwise, and, and Dallin Watney's a Lesniak. Mm. I think Simon's on the money. I think Fanua Blake. Dallin with Tenny Zalesniak and Andrew Webster, a massive chance of a Dally M trifecta. Mm. No, I wouldn't argue. And, yeah. and uh, what about this, Buzz? You're going to touch on it in tomorrow's paper as well. What about the Warriors recruitment? And Andrew Webster's walked into this side, yeah. but um, 14 of the 17 players basically came from other clubs. And most of them were rejects too, Mobsy. Like um, the two wingers, Mick. Yeah, Canterbury offloaded them. Yeah, Marcelo t- Montoya and Dallin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And there's, um, did you know Josh Curran was at the Roosters? Yep. But the Roosters don't lose anyone. Adam Pompey, Pompey, was he at the Roosters? I think he was at the Roosters too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So Peter O'Sullivan and Nathan Brown mm. are long gone from that operation. My goodness, they. Well, I think the only player that. Nickel Clockstad and Jackson Ford are the Jackson only two Ford, new yeah. players mm. yeah. this year. Yeah. 
What, what for a team that finished second last? Not new players. Players that um, Andrew Webster yeah, had yeah, a hand in yeah, recruiting. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So second last last year to top four this year with a roster where you've had very little input input on changing to do that with the current group. Amazing performance. Well, I think yeah, it's been a great coaching performance, but I'm with Buzz. I think Peter O'Sullivan and Nathan Brown and Craig Hodges as well, well should get some... Mate, this story I've done to Morris on Peter O'Sullivan because he left the Warriors like this, then he went off to the Dolphins, Yeah, couldn't get his marquee, but worked alongside Wayne Bennett and attracted a side that I think was the, the success story of the year. Yeah, And Mick, to take you back further... You know who found Greg Inglis and Israel Folau as teenagers at Melbourne? Yeah, yeah. You know who found Latrell Mitchell, Boyd Cordner, Joey Manu, Roger Tuivasa Sheik, Daniel Tupo as kids? It's a fair. Um, There's Peter O'Sullivan. It's a fair mm. resume. Are, are you concerned with this Warriors team that only three players, um, Fanua Blake, um, the returning Roger Tuivasa Sheik, and Murata Nua Kore, they're the only blokes. Locked in until 2026. Everyone else is off in the next one to two years. Or is that a chance for Andrew Webster to shape that roster even more? And it's a, it's a bit of an aging. There's a few guys there that are, you know, Dallin, Chance, Sean Johnson, Adam Fenor Blake, Dylan Walker, uh, Tohu Harris. They're on yeah, the back end of their careers, right? Yeah, but it's, it's a really good story, though, because the more success... And I would spoke to the West Tigers about this yesterday, Mick, and they're talking about how hard it is to, you know, to find players in this market. I said, be patient, because the Warriors, this is unprecedented success almost for a long period of time anyway. So what happens, all these guys, like Metcalf, who went there for 250, he was suddenly become six. Yeah. Wade Egan. Wade Egan. Mm. So, Mobsy, they won't be able to keep this, like Penrith haven't been able to. There's only one club that can, it's the Roosters. Keep a roster together. What are you Look saying? Look at Parham last year. Who'd you lose? Everyone. <laughs> but that's what I mean. I know. So, these clubs, they've just got to... The, the Warriors won't keep that roster together. No. And look, in their favour is... They finished top three in New South Wales Cup. They're yeah. bringing in Flegg next yeah, year. Yeah, that's going to be huge for them. Massive, yeah. which will be a great draw card to young kids there. Rugby kids who maybe aren't ready for super rugby level can come and play semi-professional league, travel to Sydney every second weekend. It's a good carrot to bring this next generation And, and through. don't discount what the Warriors' success is doing compared to the All Blacks' fizz in terms of kids wanting to, to play for the Warriors now. Is Cameron George your... Dally M C O of the year. Yeah, oh, oh, head of Donaghy. Yeah, well, Webster's ahead for me in coach of the year. So, who are the other CEOs alive, gentlemen? Matt Cameron, Justin yeah. Rodsky. They're just, and that's the thing. You got an opinion on this one? Yeah. Please, well, well, you look at what Matt Cameron's got there at Penrith. Their guys are all locked in long term. Cleary, mm. Leota, Fisher, Harris, yeah. Edwards, Toto, Tunga. The five eights, not. No, but they've got um, Jack Cole coming through in case he goes. They've brought mm. Dane Laurie back on cheap as chips deal. They've you talk about the Roosters being yeah, favourites they, next year. They're they, but they're going to. If gonna you did salary caps on junior rugby league, the value they'd have a billion dollars because they're getting it right. They're getting the produ- Mate, production. It's the line biggest right. rugby league area in the world. But you still got to get it right. To, you still got to identify them and keep mm. them. Mate, you and me could run it out there. <laughs> oh, we wow. could. I <laughs> so you're not giving them credit. Yeah, of course, the juniors, in, but it's a massive area. Yeah, which they, they fund and put but, resources into. Yeah, but and you look at nurture. their area compared to the Sydney Roosters. Yeah, but it's taken, yeah, of course. But it's taken Penrith a, a long time to get that right too. Mm. You know, they had a decade or more of, you know, uh, of struggling uh, of struggling and not developing the players. And look, Canterbury's got a big catchment. Look at them. Yeah. Just because you have a big catchment doesn't mean you always get it right. Mm-hmm. West Tigers have a huge catchment. The Dragons have a big catchment. Doesn't mean you get it right. Cronulla have a small catchment and have got it right. Only because you used to work there. Oh, God. Junior <laughs> reps. You did. Give yourself a rap. Level two. I was talking to a player the other day who mentioned you. <laughs> he mentioned you. Yeah, don't don't, don't mention him. <laughs> Why, <laughs> Why uh, can't I? Uh, yeah, look, I've thrown you Ben off. wants to... So while we're on the Warriors, um, why is the Walsh v. 
uh, Warriors narrative not been spoken about more from Ben? Oh, Peter Bedell's covered a little bit. And a little bit, yeah. Yeah, we'll, we'll do, we're doing a bit of a deep dive into that for the weekend as well. Um, but yeah, you're right. Uh, what about that, though? They, you lose Reese Walsh, who is an absolute superstar, obviously wanted to head home for whatever reason, personal reasons. Charles Nickel Clockstar comes yeah, over. great who, deal for both. Oh, who comes in out of reserve. He finished the year at reserve grade, and I still remember that interview he did. Yeah. He could have been kicking stones last year, yeah. finishing the year in reserve grade behind Xavier Savage. It was teary and upset at how much he owed the Raiders, Don mm. Ferner, Ricky mm. Stewart, for giving him that career. Mm. 28 years old and had one of the great years this season Yeah, CNK. It's been terrific. Yeah. yeah. And Buzz, this is what you touched on before. Expectations of the Dolphins in year two. Herbie and Flegler, should they contend for the eight? I wouldn't be surprised. Would not be surprised at all, Michael. I think two great signings and, and you know, mm. both of those players now, I think... I reckon they were nearly the two best on the open market. Nearly. And if they were on the open market still, they're probably worth a, a bit more off the back of what they've been able to produce this year. But, yeah, two really, really good signings. Throw Jake Avarello in and you, you've got Herbie and Avarello in your centres. That's pretty potent. That'll be exciting. That'll be exciting. Knocking on the door for the eight, for sure. You'll like this one, Buzz, mm. or some of it. Um, from Random Dragon... I actually thought you ate porcupine for meatballs, all right? So this stems from something a couple of weeks ago. And which then, I said. Which you said. And, yeah. and in your defense, a couple of people have agreed yeah. with you that they thought I was eating porcupine. Including my son. Others thought you were gibber, but... I googled... <laughs> you did, yes. Is porcupine edible? Yes. And apparently it tastes like venison. And yes, it is. Is edible. Can you have them in meatballs? Like, would you eat them in... Anyway. You just mince it, you goose. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you didn't know what it was two weeks ago. What do you mean? I thought it was a plant. <laughs> well, it is a plant. Uh, All right. And then he goes, I'm in Italy, but loving the podcast. If you and Buzz, this is me and you, Buzz, were on the undercard of a Tevita Pangai Jr. fight, who would win? I've never won a fight. I've got a... I can't I hold know, my hands up. Either. And you're too... You know, I, I couldn't belt you. I couldn't do it. I'd belt you. Um, oh, would you? I'm very competitive, on, Buzz. <laughs> <laughs> you, almost, you almost fell. Be careful. Be careful. Uh, You're a right, uh, bro. Who do you think would win? It's not fair. Oh, no, man. I'm 60. I know. Oh, I agree. It's just go fair. for the stents. <laughs> oh, no. Is that too well? Do you want to have the killer instinct? That's or? what Bulldog says. Uh, Probably shape up in the pub. Who would... Um, <laughs> he says, I'll hit you in the stents. Can we do it? Would you have a Daily Telegraph fight card, Buzz? Who would you like to pit against each other? I'd back Paul Crawley to murder you all. <laughs> <laughs> he is an angry man <laughs> and he can fight. Uh, you've got to get him in the office first. So uh, yeah, if, yeah. If, you, if you schedule it here, uh, it will be a chance. Who else? Well, wait, we'll, we'll, when we do the performance reviews next year, we'll we're going to have a fight card on card. it. Fight yeah. card. <laughs> <laughs> and I might just knock you out. <laughs> uh, oh, another right. question is, how do we get equity in the draw? Broncos... For one, seem to have really played outside Queensland this season. Three Which, times this season. Good crazy. story, the doggy. In Sydney. It's crazy, hey. It's crazy when you think of that. Yeah. There's absolutely no integrity in the NRL draw. And there won't be, ever. No. No. And we just, one of these things we just accept. Well, you know, how, it's, yeah, it's just not going to happen. You're not going to play everyone twice. You're not going to play everyone home and away. That's the only way you get total equity well, in a draw. Why have you put the question here then if it's but, always going to be like this? Well, because well, yeah, we're explaining, yeah. like, how yeah. do we? Okay. We don't. Mm. <laughs> well, how do we, Buzz? <laughs> you, if you can't. You I've can, just said there's well, no integrity. Oh, end of story. Right, Move story. on. Sorry, mate. Josh wants to know, if Angus Crichton stays, what's the makeup of the for the Roosters' forward pack next year? Um, unbelievable depth if they hold on to all of them. Further further to that, crazy to think that someone out of Swalehi, Young and Tupu will be playing reserve grade. If Swalehi and Crichton leave, that's close to a $1.5 million, $1. million war chest. The war chest will have to be taken up with upgrades. Billy Smith is going to need a substantial upgrade. So is Wong. Yeah. Mine is they off contracts. They've got Lainu arriving. Mm. They've got Dom Young arriving. They, I think the Roosters, even the Roosters, will need to offload to keep that. Angus won't be there next year, will he, Buzz? I doubt it. I think he's going to rugby. But Sawyer Lee here will be there. Um, things change, Mick. You as know, Brand, oh, no, you, you, you as know as well as I do. Halfway through the year, they wanted to get rid of Brandon yeah. Smith. Yeah. But then Brandon Smith had that month running in. Yeah. So things move, change. And Andrew from Asheville, this is for you, Mobsy. With his duties directing a, a cross-platform team in podcast and print, 
and, and an ever-rotating back line of Jackson, Reed, Karianas, Fatima, Crawley, Ricky and Rothfield, is A-Mobs a smoky for Daily M Captain of the Year? No, it's a lay-down Mazir. Thoughts, Buzzy? I'd vote for Jackson. <laughs> <laughs> See, this is the issue. Mate, you don't work weekends. Rugby league is played on weekends. I can never find you on a Saturday or Sunday. Mate, and you want to be captain of the year. Listen, that will do me. Listen, this is the perfect example of the egos you have to deal with. This, <laughs> and, hey, come Saturday, Sunday, there's nothing left for me to do. You guys, you know what you've got to do. Sunday You've been given mornings, your instructions. Queens Park, Russ, is always available at half past seven. Hey, Buzz, G-, G. Ferris gets my vote. Three G. points. Ferris, good job. I want to. I want to bring something up with you, Buzz. I was oh, just, oh what's on. happened now? No, no, it's not. It's to get your opinion on something. I had a look at Michael's Twitter account the other day, just because. Mm. What did I do? Just because. Have a look at just seeing How who engages with what. Have, have a read of that for me. What does that say? You've never liked a post on Twitter. No. Michael Carianis has never ever liked a post on social media. Not any of your colleagues, friends, anything. No. That, you've I never liked anything. A lot. I retweet my. But you my haven't colleagues. liked anything. Well, I retweeted Talk about it. Team Player of the Year, yeah. Dally M. How many I retweeted. He got, I retweeted. If How many I like has he it? got? He has twelve point four thousand. Nice oh, photo of my dog. That's crap, mate. That following. Well, can you give us a? Push along. Wait, Buzz, when you retire, can I take you over your Twitter account? <laughs> 96,000. <laughs> you transfer it into my name once Go you're on, done? Go on, say it. Russian robots. How many of them did you buy? <laughs> that's what you usually that, say. That's Mobsy. <laughs> All right. Next. Or was oh, that it? That's, that's it. it. It's dinner time. It's din- I wish it was dinner time. We've got a column to do. Um, we're having, Buzz, guess what we're having on the menu tonight? Starts with L. <laughs> Lasagna. <laughs> <laughs> Lamb. Oh, oh lamb. Of course. Lamb cutlets. Lamb oh, cutlets layer. crumbed? No, crumb. You, no, I don't Fried, do grilled, grilled, barbecued. Grilled, yeah. Steamer. Oh, we might actually put it in the barbecue. It's beautiful at the moment, the weather. So mm. might dust off the barbecue depending on what time. You better do it today because it's turning cold tomorrow. I don't change in the weather. Cold. But anyway. Yeah, I'm going to go to the jungle. I've jungle. got it right. Extra veggies. Extra hot. And it is magnificent, Michael. Ooh. We're doing a vegan lasagna tonight, so... <laughs> What? It's Vegan, very Bob's nice. It? Just something different. What's, What's in it? Wife, What's, what is it? <laughs> my wife makes it. It's what very good. What do you put good. in it? What vegetables? Zucchini, I'd put in. Yeah, zucchini. Capsicum. Eggplant. Cap- Eggplant's a Eggplant. big one. Eggplant, yeah. Mm, which is great. I bet you so. I know what's in there. What? Stack of onions. Hey, Pork Yes. Porcupine. <laughs> Porcupine onions. Uh. Oh, can't wait. Jeez, very you good. have boring meals at your joint. We don't. They're you very do, nice. Mate. Yeah, I'll bring like, you some in. If we're rating the, if we're giving three points out, you're not getting the three <laughs> you, for the. You haven't tried lasagna. it. You don't win me over with your fancy porcupine meat, Mick. All right, <laughs> <laughs> mate. You are a really, really boring chef. <laughs> oh, I need to get Reedy in here because he'll appreciate the. Oh, well, you know what? Of... <laughs> Two. Yeah, he's all yours. <laughs> Oh, actually, mine too. Yeah. That's drama. Uh-huh. I'm going to get going, boys. <laughs> All right, guys. Thanks for that. See, See ya. Out.